Welcome back to the Happy Camper, coming to you from the beautiful mountains of southwest Montana. We are shooting here at our sponsor's dealership today, Rocky Mountain RV in Butte, Montana. And that's right, the southwest corner of the state down there where the interstates cross. And I was just standing here looking out the back windows of this fifth wheel that we're reviewing today, thinking, I wonder how many dealerships in the country have a view like this directly from their parking lot. The, the people here at Rocky Mountain get to look at this view every single day. And it is an absolutely beautiful bluebird day here in southwest Montana. It is uh, late February, but uh, so it's a little cold out there still and a little bit of snow on the ground. But the, uh, the sunshine feels great and it is absolutely beautiful today. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the uh, 2020 Sandpiper 3220 RL fifth wheel. And that RL in the, in the model number generally signifies rear living room, which this unit technically is. However, it does have another feature that uh, is often designated in the model number that isn't in this one. So it's a little bit misleading. This is a mid-bunk uh, floor plan so it's got a bunk room kind of in the center of the coach here and that's become a very popular setup throughout the last few years uh, and but you know Sam Pepper has decided to signify this as a rear living room which is fine that's not an issue um, it, it of course like I said it does have a rear living room this particular floor plan is uh, a very short mid bunk uh, generally speaking, most of the mid-bunk floor plans that are on the market are going to be between that 36 and 38 feet in length. And, um, you know, this particular one is down into that 32-foot length range. Uh, only one other floor plan on the market that I know of that is this short in a mid-bunk, which is the Arctic Wolf 298 mid-bunk. And, um, of course, Arctic Wolf being a Forest River company, Sandpiper being a Forest River company, you can see that they're sharing some ideas between the two product lines, which is great. I mean, again, it's been one of the best sellers for Arctic Wolf. Why not put it in uh, in Sandpiper? Of course, that way we have the mid um uh, mid profile in Arctic Wolf and the full profile in Sandpiper and we still have that nice short length. So this is going to be very similar to the 298 Arctic Wolf if you've seen that floor plan. This one's going to have some slight upgrades in it. Uh, it is a very well done unit. I'll show you kind of where that mid bunk um, full profile makes a difference when we get up towards the bedroom there. So I'm going to start up here at the entry door. We'll go through the technical information before I get too carried away here. The dry weight on this unit is 10,713 pounds. That's this particular trailer as it was scaled coming off the assembly line. Uh, it does have a 52 gallon fresh water capacity, 38 gallons on the black and the gray, as well as a um, set of tandem 16 inch uh, wheels and tires. This is going to have aluminum wheels on it. Uh, you know, again, this guy's going to tow nicely on a three-quarter ton pickup at 10.7. Dry weight, by the time you load this guy up and go down the road with it, you're going to add probably 1,500 pounds to that. So we're well out of the tow rating for half ton, in my opinion. Even some, most of the mid-profiles, unless you're dealing with a little single slide. This part of the world where you have high mountain passes, super thin air, you know, high wind gusts, that type of thing, I'm going to tell you that half tons and, and fifth wheels don't generally get along anyway so three quarter ton definitely on this particular model minimum uh, gas will do it diesel will do it better of course so right here at the entry door that'll signify the door side of course wall we have the large slide out and that's just behind the entry door here and this is going to house our dinette as well as our entertainment center you can see that this unit does have a fireplace down here at the bottom the entertainment center the 40 inch flat panel tv and then some really nice storage up and around that particular entertainment area so we do get uh, some decent cabinets there above the dinette you're going to see a really nice big picture window which i was showing you the mountains out of just a minute ago as well as your freestanding four chair dinette this does have a little add -a leaf and it's right down in this area here. Um, that particular area will slide out a little bit and give you a little bit more table room. I didn't slide it out just so I can I can walk around in here a little bit easier when I'm filming. We do have a ventilation window in the back of the slide out there. Of course, lighting overhead here. Sometimes I forget to pan up and show you guys the ceiling and that type of thing. We do have a ceiling fan up top, LED lighting across the top of the unit. Uh, this unit does have some really nice wood colors in it. The floor is a very light gray. It's a wood plank design, and then the carpet is fairly dark and then the the um 
The wood is kind of a mid-tone. It's, it's a really nice, um, you know, very, very subtle tone on the wood. And we do have a very nice light countertop in this as well. So coming across the back wall, here is our height of bed sleeper sofa that will fold out and come pretty tight up here to the island to, um, to, to make your secondary bed. We do have uh, end tables on both sides, which will double as nightstands. We do also have uh, electrical outlets there against the back wall, some LED lighting up underneath the rear cabinets here also. And then of course there you can see the rear cabinets. This unit of course does have all pull down roller shades. Let me show you one of those just so you have an idea what they look like. There's your roller shade, comes down, very simple procedure. Just pull it down. Um, they seem to seem to hold up pretty well. Those those were tried out years and years ago in the RV industry, but way back in the 90s and they were a disaster. These have been uh, very good quality. It's just simply pull down like that. We just pull and release and it will uh, it'll pull itself right back up there. So they have been they have been pretty bulletproof little shades. They work pretty well. Uh, coming up here into the kitchen, it's gonna be on the off door side of it. Of course, we do have another slide out over here. Uh, this is gonna house our Dometic uh, 10 cubic foot stainless steel gas electric refrigerator. This unit was optioned with gas electric and I believe, and you have to check the specs on this, but I believe this unit is standard with electric only home style refrigerator and you have to option it for the gas electric. Of course, Rocky Mountain, being up here in Montana in the backwoods, they know this unit is gonna be dry camping off grid very often. Uh, so they of course do opt for the gas electric refrigerator. This is one of the, in fact, it is the largest uh, gas electric refrigerator that you can buy with just the two doors on it like this. So it fits well in this space. It works well in there. And of course, right up here next to it in the kitchen is gonna be overhead cabinetry as well as an LG uh, combination convection and microwave oven. Um, very nice stainless steel look. That's a, the full home size, you know, mounted up underneath the cabinets there. It has light in the bottom of it. It's really a good setup. The countertop in here is flushed off with a glass cover on the stove. This, of course, is going to be the, uh, the steel type of grate with the three burner top. And then the cover comes down here to finish off the countertop, give you a little extra countertop space. This is a large capacity oven as well. So RV styles are gonna be a 17 or a 22. This is a 22 inch oven, stainless steel on the front. It does have the window in the front with the lighting inside the oven as well as up here on the knobs. So really a nice look there. We do have a cabinetry down here below with some drawers. We have one underneath and then three to the side. These of course will be full extension ball bearing roller guides they are plywood boxes very nice you know of course like i said the full extension ball bearing guides you can just simply close these up and they are the soft close type um hardware on those on those hinges as i pan over here towards the island you're going to see a uh, of course, the, the high-rise gooseneck faucet mounted up over the top of the big stainless steel single bowl sink. And this is all covered off with the thermal wrapped countertop. This is, uh, and this is a great option um, price-wise and weight-wise versus a solid surface accordion, that type of thing. This is much lighter, much less expensive to do, and it seems like this is holding up very well. It's It's been about five or six years since they tried this in the RV industry, and it was disastrous. We had a lot of cold weather cracking up here in Montana with these particular uh, this particular type of tops, but they've changed the compound up now that they wrap this top up in and they, they basically uh, heat treat it on there. That compound is majorly different than it used to be. And it's been out on the market for almost three years. It has been absolutely flawless. We haven't had a single issue with it. So I really like the idea that they've got this more perfected. It does seem like it's working extremely well. Uh, it does come complete with a sink top cover that flushes it off and it matches the countertop exactly. So it's really a nice feature there. The other thing I really like about this unit is it does have a big pantry here just forward of the kitchen. So up here, up top, you're gonna see nice big doors and these go all the way up to the ceiling. There's an impressive amount of storage space. These again are the soft closed doors. You can just shut them like that and they will close themselves. Down below, we have additional storage. Over here, we have another storage door and then we have this little coffee bar here. This is gonna, of course, have electricity as well as a, a nice little countertop here. You can set your Keurig up or your coffee maker. Works really good. And again, additional storage up top above that. 
So uh, no, no shortage of storage in this kitchen at all. They've done a nice job with it for a shorter, quote unquote, shorter, you know, fifth wheel. 32 foot isn't necessarily short, but in a mid bunk, it absolutely is, where you're four feet shorter than the next closest mid bunk that's on the market. Um, the pennant lighting, I was gonna just pan up here and show you guys the ceiling again, because I do often forget that. We have pennant lighting up above the island there that looks really nice. Of course, there is a vent in the kitchen. Our air return for our, our roof mount AC is up there as well. Uh, here's the feature that makes this unit pretty unique is the bunk room. And of course, like I said, this is about midship. It's about right where you walk in. Uh, the cool thing with this is a lot of fifth wheel bunk houses have the requirement for uh, a secondary bathroom. So you'll have a bath up for the main bedroom and then you'll have the bunk room all the way in the back. So they put another half bath back there with just a sink and a toilet. With this one, the, the bathroom is sandwiched on either side of the, uh, with, with bedrooms on either side of it. So you don't have the necessity for a secondary bathroom. Saves us some money, saves us some precious space when you're dealing in units of this size. And this sun coming through this window is giving me a little bit of heck with my camera lens. I'll get the lens out of here so we can see what we're looking at. So down here below we do have the uh, the bottom is a sofa with a with a cup holder and, a, and an armrest built into the front of it. There it is a a, um, a very easy clean you know kind of a, a leather type of product. Um, and then of course right here on the front we have uh, electrical outlets as well as USB charging. Um, up above this bunk up on the top is a single single width bunk. Uh, it does have the teddy bear mattress cover on it, and then it does flip up. And I'm sorry I'm doing this with one hand, so bear with me. It flips up and locks in right here. So you can sit at the sofa without bumping your head. So that's a really nice little feature. And then this sofa does make down into a bed as well, and it's a little bit different style than I've seen, so we'll flip the we'll flip the backrest up. We'll reach right down here and pull out on this handle and that will slide the sofa out. And then the back just simply lays right out like that. So it's a pretty interesting system that does make down into a bed. It's a fairly wide bed when it's laid out. If you've got little kids, you could do two. If it's a bigger kid, probably one. Over here on the other side of the bunk room, you're gonna see that we do have um, we do have some storage doors here. It is set up for another entertainment center, um, so you can add another TV in here for kids. It doesn't have it installed in this one, but again, it's a really, really easy install. Very simple to do, um, inexpensive. You, your dealer can do it, or of course you can do it yourself. So storage here, we do have some drawers down below, and then some additional storage doors there as well. The other thing that I saw that Sandpiper does that they haven't been doing in these rooms is an air conditioning duct. Uh, into the mid bunk room because we do have the loft above that's a little more complicated to get in here uh, I actually personally have owned a mid bunk fifth wheel myself that does not have an AC duct in there and it got very hot So it's nice to see that they rectified that situation. We do have heating plumbed in here as well Let's walk up towards the front bedroom and we'll get a look at the the advantages of the high profile um, as we're walking that direction, I'll show you a few more of the features. We do have a small little coat closet here as you right inside the entry door as you walk in. And then this also houses our main control panel that has, you know, all of your, all of your control switches in it. This unit is equipped with the LCI one control on it there. So we do have that system as well as a central vacuum right down here. And then this little ladder will pull out to be able to access our loft bed. And this is where a full profile is gonna shine over a mid pro, you're gonna get um, the option of having a loft bed, number one, and if, if even if you do have an amid pro, it's gonna be pretty cramped. This one's pretty spacious. It does have an AC vent up here as well. We have a little bit of storage built into the headboard. It has a porthole window, and of course, again, some LED lighting. So we do have a nice uh, large, and it's, it's like a queen size. It's, you know, a little bit different shape because it's got a corner cut, but, um, but it is close to a queen size mattress um, up here on top. So that's a nice big space up there. We'll finish off up here um, in the bedroom bathroom area. I'm gonna do the bedroom first. As we walk in, again, nicely done, very tasteful. Uh, I appreciate the fact that um, Forest River does spend a lot of time on their interiors. They make them look good. They have a really good design team. The gals that, that um, design this do a very, very good job of matching colors and, and just giving us some definition so it doesn't look like we're just inside of a big shoe box. Of course, overhead storage here. We do have a little, uh, 
curvature built into the front here for our headboard. We have lighting up above that. A nightstand on either side of the bed, and it's a nice big nightstand. USB charging, again, 110 volt electricity. Down below it, there are storage doors on each one of those. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not a super tall guy, but I'm standing up up here without any issues um, with, with uh, clearance for my head. And, of course, we don't have any steps up here in the upper platform and that's the second area that a, a full profile will shine over a mid pro is we don't have those steps up here between the bedroom and bathroom decks this unit does of course have this slide out here in the bedroom and this is going to be all storage so it's going to be hanging closets one on uh, one out here in the bedroom one in the bathroom uh, it does have storage drawers down below and then four here in the center nice big storage drawers so we have lots and lots of storage in this guy if you wanted to use this as a uh, summer retreat unit where it's going to go out and stay at the lake or whatever you could definitely do that we do have access into our bathroom from the bedroom as well which is nice if we have company you don't have to step out in the hallway right into the bathroom here um, again inside the bathroom we have a what would be a, a linen type closet here as well and that's going to be shelved and then a drawer down below and that's going to be closed off with this little pocket door that slides across from here the bathroom uh, is fairly standard we do have a towel bar mounted which is nice to see you don't see that in a lot of models anymore uh, again the thermal wrap countertop over here on the sink and a nice big mirror there as well this one doesn't have a medicine cabinet built in but it is a nice big mirror we do have storage down below our um, our bathroom sink here uh, and then again like I said we do have the linen closet right behind me this does run the Dometic uh, porcelain toilet as well as the Neo Angle corner glass shower and this will open up and the, the shower surrounded here they've given it kind of a kind of a uh, granite look they do a nice stainless steel adjustable bar rod in it it's got a you know natural light skylight over the top it's a pretty nice little feature there pretty nice system all right, I'm gonna walk back down towards the main floor here. We'll go outside, take a look around the outside of this unit. Uh, everything inside, like I said, I, I'm pretty happy with the way it's done. It seems like Sandpiper spent some time, you know, little things like they put a picture frame here, just to just to you know take some of the the blahness away from that wall. We have a very nice little handrail built in, and then they do this little clock up over the door. It's it's small touches, but again, it's it's things that make the difference in my world. You know, I've said this before. Anybody can build a box with some beds in it. it the companies that spend a little extra time and give some detail uh, make the difference to me. All right, as we step outside here, I'm going to notice that this door is extra wide. So you know, it's not your, kind of your standard RV door. It's real skinny to get through. I would I would guess that that's about a 34 to 36 inch door. So it's a nice big. Door. Door. Uh, I am right up on the street here filming today, so I apologize for the background noise. I do have the muff on the microphone, so hopefully it won't be too overwhelming, but we'll go outside, take a look around this coach, and get you the complete view of what this guy looks like. And once again, we're just looking at an absolutely beautiful bluebird day here in Montana. Uh, just couldn't ask for a whole lot more in late February. So there is our Sandpiper exterior. They're still running a, a tan exterior. This has kind of a tan gray two-tone front cap on it. It's got a very elegant look as far as uh, as far as most fifth wheels go. I'm pretty uh, pretty impressed with the way the front end of it looks. It has good storage on it. Um, of course, power awning that you can see there is, is pretty standard in fifth wheels today, but it does have the full length LED light strip, which is nice. Um, as we get a little closer, this has got the Rhino pin box on it from uh, LCI. It's a, it's a little smaller design pin box. It doesn't stick out quite so far. It's, it's kind of a nice feature. Uh, you know, again, I don't know if it makes a huge difference in usage, but it looks fairly good. Uh, up here in the front, we have large storage. Uh, it's going to house our batteries right over here in this corner, as well as, uh, you know, just a big uh, steel framed compartment here. I believe that this one is large enough to take a, an onboard generator. Uh, again, you'd have to measure it and be sure on that, but it looks like it will take it to me. Uh, and then, of course, we do have our jack operation switches up here at the front. This is an electric jack system. It is pinnable on the front, but it does have the four post electric leveling. Back over here on the door side, of course, we have outside speakers. You're going to have a propane tank that's split one to each side. These are going to house the 30-pound uh, LP tanks, so the taller LP tanks. This is going to be your pass-through belly storage compartment. 
and it has a, uh, a, a horizontally hinged door on it. This gives you full access all the way across. Everything's finished off nicely. All the plumbing's tucked up out of the way. You don't have anything hanging down in the middle of the coach. You can see a little bit of the aluminum framework that they use in the Sandpiper. Of course, this is alum uh, an aluminum laminated coach, uh, so it, it, of course, does have that not only in the floor but in the side walls as well. Coming down the on-door on side here, the door side, um, you can see, of course, we have the one step, um, a step, or excuse me, step above, um, I, and I believe that's from more ride, the large entry step that's going to give you access into the coach. We do also have the large assist grab handle coming by. This particular Sandpiper is what they're designating as a C-Class, which is their, uh, their new designation. They have both standard Sandpiper and C-Class. C-Class is going to be uh, smaller units and a little more uh, price effective. Out here on the outside of the unit, we do have the little uh, outdoor refrigerator. Um, I've talked about this a lot in the past. Of course, this is electric only. So if you're in Montana with no power, that refrigerator you can remove, but it's still great storage. You could put a large cooler, that type of thing in there. So it's still a good storage space. As we head towards the back of the unit here, you're going to see it does have a rear ladder. And I really recommend that people do not get up on top of their trailer on a regular basis. Number one, you can cause damage to your roof membrane. This will be a full walk-on roof, and they say that you can walk around up there. It is decked and sheeted for it. However, like I said, if you get a, a sharp spot on your shoe or a rock in or something like that, you can definitely damage that, that uh, thermal wrap or that uh, um, the, the rubber roofing up there anyway. And um, the other thing that happens often is that rubber roofing is ultra, ultra slick. If it's got any snow or ice up there, be super careful. I wish they wouldn't do uh, ladders on the back of them, but some of them still do. So it is there. Use it with caution. There you can see the ground control uh, leveling system. This is a four-post electric system, like I said, uh, and it does work very nicely. It has an LP quick connect back here as well. And then, of course, uh, spare tires mounted here on the rear bumper. We do have... Uh, Backup camera prep up there on the top of the unit. Of course, this is a 50 amp service unit, so it will be wired for two ACs. It's gonna come standard with one, but you can add a second to it. The off-door side is more of your technical side. Uh, you can see, of course, uh, aluminum, t aluminum wheels. And I think I misspoken there because I did say these were eight lugs, and these are a six lug, 15 inch tire wheel combination radi radial rubber that they're running out here. So that is a correction from earlier. It is a six lug, 15 inch on this. Uh, one thing I did want to mention with, this, with the uh, Sandpiper series, they do run this big 10 gallon gas electric water heater on all their models. And that's a nice feature. It's a good upgrade over your six gallon standard that you'll see on most mid-profile fifth wheels. So once again, that's the uh, 2020 Sandpiper 3220 RL mid-bunk fifth wheel. It is a very nice option out there on the market for a shorter mid-bunk, uh, kind of an overall profile of it here. You can see it is uh, fairly short in a mid-bunk setup. It is fairly tall because, of course, it's a full profile, but it was uh, it was nicely done. You know, check the website there for pricing. I'll link to this unit so you can check the website for pricing. Pretty attractively priced, I think, for what you're getting there. Once again, this is a happy camper coming to you from beautiful Butte, Montana. Rocky Mountain RV, our sponsor's dealership here. Uh, if you can and it makes sense, please help them out anytime that it does make sense for you. Uh, their website is rockymtnrv.com. Thanks and happy camping.